Hello everyone, I'm Yilun Zhou, a PhD student at MIT. Today, I'm presenting our paper, Do Feature Attribution Methods Correctly Attribute Features? This is joint work with Serena Booth, Marco Tulio Ribeiro, and Julie Xia. Normally, we use machine learning models to predict an output for a given input. However, in many cases, especially high-stakes scenarios, we also want to know why a particular prediction is made. Due to the complexity of modern predictors, such as neural networks, the explanation is often produced by a local explainer. Among all explanation styles, feature attribution ones are the most popular. For an input query, the explanation assigns a score to each input feature to represent its importance to the prediction. For example, when predicting whether a mushroom is edible or poisonous, it is found that the fall order feature contributes the most to the poisonous prediction. For image data, the explanation has an attribution value for each pixel, resulting in a heat map over the image. Such an explanation is also known as a saliency map. For text data, the attribution values are defined over words in the input text. So why are explanations useful? Well, they can serve multiple purposes. For example, they can inform developers that the model relies on certain spurious correlation or assure them that the model works correctly as intended. In scenarios where the model makes certain decisions like credit card approval, the explanation for an unfavorable outcome like a denied application could also suggest actions that the person can take to improve the outcome, such as obtaining a higher income or requesting a lower credit limit. Finally, if a model achieves superhuman performance on certain tasks, such as medical diagnosis, interpreting the model may lead to new scientific knowledge and discovery. In all cases, it's crucial that the explanations are correct and faithfully reflect the model's reasoning process. So how should we evaluate model explanations for their correctness? Before answering this question, let's first look at how we evaluate model predictions. It is simple. We have an oracle predictor, typically the human annotator, that produces the ground truth outputs, and we compare the model prediction with it using metrics such as accuracy rate. Can we take the same idea to evaluate explanations as well? Let's try. We would put in an oracle explainer that produces a ground truth explanation, and then compare our explainer's explanation with this ground truth. This seems right, but how do we get an oracle explainer? One idea is to use the human explanations during the label annotation process. But there is a big problem. We want the explanation to be reflective of how the model works, not how the human thinks. There are some other proposals, such as evaluating feature attribution by how much the model prediction changes when the most important features are withheld. However, they all have certain drawbacks that lead to the rejection of correct explanations or the acceptance of incorrect ones, as discussed in detail in the paper. Fundamentally, the problem is that we do not have the ground truth feature attribution to compare against. In fact, trying to acquire it is the exact purpose for all explainers. So the task of evaluating them sounds like a circular argument, unless we can somehow specify the ground truth explicitly. As a concrete example, Suppose that we have data points for two classes. For every input, we know that only the orange features are correlated with the label, and the blue ones are completely non-informative. Therefore, if a model achieves more than random performance, we know that it must rely on these orange features. In addition, if the model also achieves perfect accuracy, then it must not be distracted by the irrelevant features. Combining these two together for such a model, we should expect the feature attribution explanations to focus on the union of all orange feature locations, or the purple features in the image on the right. There are two problems to solve, correlating the orange features with the label and decorrelating the blue features. We first do the latter. For a natural dataset, any input feature could be correlated with the label and thus be used by the model. However, if we introduce randomness in the label by flipping it with some probability, we can controllably reduce the correlation. In the extreme case of randomly flipping every label, 
were guaranteed that none of the original features are correlated with the label. After this label reassignment step, ensuring that the orange features are correlated is easy. We simply inject features, such as watermark patterns on images, according to the new label. Now that we have worked out the dataset modification procedure and set up the expectations for good explanations, let's evaluate some common image and text models. For the image domain, we collected a BERT dataset and injected various features such as the watermark shown here in the red box. We evaluated several saliency maps, which all seem reasonable when explaining the original images. We randomly shuffle the labels in the label reassignment step so that only the injective features are useful for the prediction. In addition, the models we trained easily achieve near-perfect accuracy, suggesting that the contribution of outside features is minimal. Thus, we compute the attribution assigned inside the box as a percentage of total attribution. Note that a larger box area should naturally lead to a higher attribution percentage, so we plot it against the area size. In the plot, the red line represents the behavior of a random saliency map, while the green line represents that of an ideal one. Every marker represents an independent training run evaluated on images with features either applied or absent. As we can see, the success rate varies widely both for feature types and for explainer methods. Alarmingly, some combinations are not much better than the random baseline. We conducted additional studies that exhibit other failure modes of these explanations. For example, some of them could not recognize the model's increasing usage of correlator features during the training process as the test accuracy increases. They could not consistently recognize small and non-obvious features either, further casting the doubt on their intended use of helping developers find subtle yet important visual cues. For text attention models, we follow the architecture used by the two papers that investigate whether attention is explanation or not. This architecture uses a bidirectional LSTM network to get a contextualized encoding for each word. At the same time, a query vector for attention computation is learned. Then the dot product attention weight is computed from the word encoding and the query vector. And the final context vector is the attention weighted average of these contextualized encodings. For the dataset, we start from the Beer Advocate dataset and again reassigns labels randomly. Then according to the new label, we change all article words such as A or the to either A for the positive class or the for the negative class. Thus, only these words are correlated with the label and we can evaluate their attention weights relative to other words. The attention patterns for two sentences are shown below, with each bar corresponding to the weight for a token. Orange bars are weights for article words, and green bars are those for non-article words. We fail to find convincing evidence to support that attentions can be considered as explanations, because these attentions for correlating words at most stand out locally but get easily overwhelmed by global variations, or fail to stand out at all. Last, we evaluate neural rationale models. These models have two components. A rationale selector first selects a set of words from the input, known as the rationale. Then a classifier makes a prediction from the selected rationales only. Due to the architecture of the rationale network, the rationales are often considered as the explanations for the prediction. Notably, they are discrete selections of useful words. For this experiment, we evaluate how well and exclusively the rationales can focus on relevant features and ignore irrelevant ones. Similar to the previous experiment, we start with a beer advocate dataset and reassign labels randomly. Then depending on the label, we only correlate the article words in half of the text and change article words in the other half randomly. Thus, we should expect that the rationales to only focus on the article words in the correlating half. Does this happen in practice? Unfortunately, for the models that we evaluated, overselection of the irrelevant words consistently occurs, sometimes even at the expense of the correlated ones. 
the example here shows that all article words, relevant or not, have been selected. In practical scenarios, such over-selection could lead to the obfuscation of the true reasoning process, and further pruning may be needed. To conclude, this work proposes an objective and automated evaluation procedure of feature attribution methods using a dataset modification procedure to avoid pitfalls of previous approaches that arise due to the lack of feature ground truth. We evaluated three problem domains. For image models, we found that the reliability varies widely across explainers and feature types. For text models, attention weights fail to consistently highlight important features, while rationale models are prone to overselection of irrelevant but semantically or syntactically similar features. Overall, the results suggest that better explanation methods need to be developed, and we should be wary of trusting their correctness for analyzing models trained on natural datasets in the wild.